Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Himmel and I have ADHD. Just so you know, if you do happen to have ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, then please note this. Like whether you've been formally diagnosed or not, by the way, if you're not formally diagnosed, I'd recommend getting a formal diagnosis, right? But like, it's super important that um, you know that the symptoms of ADHD, you can overcome them. Anyone can overcome them. It's absolutely fine. All right, so don't feel like if you do have these symptoms, then it's the end of the world. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. And also note that too, that it has nothing to do with your intelligence. Happy, 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 happy. It doesn't make you any less or more smarter than someone else. So please don't think that if you do have it, that you're, you know, you're stupid or you're dumb or, you know, you can't achieve great things like how someone else that doesn't have it, you know, does. So this video, we're just going to go over what are a few ways we can actually manage um, our attention. Um, whether you have ADHD or not. This one's just gonna be more focusing on what are some of the problems that someone with ADHD or someone with um, with like inability to hold their attention might have um, and what are some of the solutions that we can kind of implement into our lives so that you know we can focus better, we can hold our attention better, we can do more work, we can achieve more. Um, and I think overall improve our quality of life um, so that we could be happier, more productive, and I suppose satisfied individuals. So have hope, stay positive. Um, but yeah, here are a few things that I'd like to share with you. First thing I would like to recommend to you is to outline clear deadlines and consequences for those deadlines. Very often what, what happens is if that, if there's no deadline, someone that has ADHD would kind of just lose track of time and not really pay attention to it. But if there's a clear deadline and then there's obvious consequences for not meeting that deadline, then someone with ADHD can very easily focus. I'll give you an example. The night before a test or the night before a project is due, how focused are you? Like intensely, like, and anyone, anyone focuses when there's a sense of urgency and then there's a deadline and there's clear consequences of not handing whatever it is on time. Number two, gadgets. So one solution that I'd like to share with you that can help you manage this is like using gadgets, little toys that you can use that can just help you fiddle with something. I know a lot of schools, well, at least in Australia, are actually like allowing these sort of things now, but like fidget spinners, I know there were a craze like five, six years ago. Um, like everyone had one. When we're actually playing and fiddling with something, it allows part of that activity to be engaged, that extra kind of physical energy to be engaged with something else. So that if we need to hold our attention, whether it be for study, for homework, for work we can actually do those things and so my encouragement to you is is that find something you can kind of fiddle with one that obviously doesn't you know um uh that doesn't disturb like everyone else around you and then also two is it's kind of just easy to carry around with number three wear a hat or a hoodie now i've mentioned this before but this is super helpful. Like if you're wearing a hoodie and you need to make sure that it's covering your eyes. So it's a little bit like this, right? Well, maybe that's a bit too much, but like what this is doing is that it's reducing the field of vision, right? Don't wear it like you're cool or something. Like don't wear it like this. You don't need to wear it like that because it's not helping. Yeah, it needs to go over your head like this. The reason why is because like if things are out of sight, then it's out of mind. Like the less things that you have to look at, the less likely you are going to get distracted. It's as simple as that. It's the reason why like racing horses have those blinkers, right? Those, I think they're called blinkers or blinders. I don't know. But like you see those things, right? We'll put a picture up right for you. But like this here, they have them so that the horse is running in a straight line and isn't getting distracted by everything else left, right and center. So taking that exact same principle, that's what we mean when we say, you know, wear a hat or a hoodie of your eyes so you can remain focused. Number four, now this is more applicable to those who are students, but sit closer to the teacher. It kind of follows the same principle as like the out of sight, out of mind thing. But like, I know when I was in high school, like I sat at the back row, I think for a good half, half a year or something. And like, I would just be chatting to my friends the whole time. Um, and I just get very distracted very, very easily. And so like my solution common sense was to sit at the front row of the classroom um, because then all I could see was the teacher and the whiteboard. And when I'm seeing just that, it's very hard to get distracted and it's very hard to lose my attention. And so if my friends are kind of like sitting in the back row, they're back there, but they're not in my field of vision. And so I can actually focus on what's in front of me. And like, honestly, I get it. Your friends might be very funny and very, very interesting. I had funny and interesting friends too. 
but you know, I cared about my learning. And um, one thing about like ADHD, like the hyperactivity part um, is that it needs to be interesting and I get it. But when things aren't interesting, this is one of the solutions, one of the ways that you can deal with it. And number five, smartphones. You might be asking the question, are we inducing ADHD symptoms um, by spending more and more time on our phones as a society? Short answer to this is yes. In fact, a 2014 study with 7,102 students, I believe, so quite a big study, found that um, like these adolescents, right? These are, there was 7,102 adolescents. So they struggled to hold their attention if they spent more than 60 minutes on their phone in a day. Now, my assumption is, is that a lot of young people are spending a lot more than, I spend about four hours myself every single day. And like, and so you kind of, you got to think about it. Like, are we gearing our young people these days to have these symptoms of inattentiveness, of not being able to hold their attention and focus and do like long bouts of intense focus work and whatnot? And the question, well, I suppose the answer to that question is, yeah, like it's, it's a sad reality, but like, you know, it's, we kind of got to face it and be honest with ourselves because this is what we are facing at the moment. You have a lot of young people in high school who want to do well, who strive for greatness, but unfortunately don't have the capacity to because their minds just aren't allowing them. And like, this is one other thing I want to kind of share as well. And like, I talk about it like a few times in other videos, but like, I just want to keep bringing your mind back to this idea because it's something that's always coming up in my own mind. And that is that anything we practice, we get good at. Like anything we practice, we get extremely good at. Like if we are continuously practicing getting distracted, if we are continuously practicing shifting our attention constantly, we're going to get really good at it. And so when, when we ask ourselves to then focus for like an hour, but we haven't practiced focusing, then it's like, that's a stupid request to ask of yourself because you just can't do it. And so obviously the ob this obvious solution here is, is that and what I think can manage a lot of things, like this is not backed by research or anything, who knows, there might be research that actually backs this, but this just, for me, makes common sense, right? Like if you practice focusing and you practice consistently, when you lose focus, bringing back your attention, then you can build focus. That's backed by research, by the way. The bringing back of your attention to the task at hand is super helpful. Everyone deals with these things differently, but I hope some of the things that I have shared with you um, might help um, and please try them. If one doesn't work, try a different one or share some ideas that have helped you that you think could be really helpful for other people to know. Post it in the comments. There's a two hour podcast by Andrew Huberman. You are more than welcome uh, to have a listen to. It's titled um, ADHD and how anyone can improve their focus. Now, like I said, it is two hours long. So if you do have ADHD, then that might be, might be a bit of a long time to kind of uh, listen to something, but um, I'm sure I'm sure you'll find the time and I'm sure you have the energy to do it. So go ahead and check that out if you wish. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I will see you in the next one. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.